Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am Frank Benson Jones, and I welcome you to this session of Bible study. During this session, we will continue our study in the gospel according to John. And in this section, Jesus reassures us that he has gone to prepare a place for all who have put their faith in him. John chapter 14, verse 1, Jesus is a speaker. He says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Now, I think there's a better translation in the contemporary English version to tell us what Jesus really said. In the contemporary English version, John 14, 1 reads, Jesus said to his disciples, don't worry have faith in God and have faith in me. And I believe that is a proper translation because the words that are translated believe in the King James is the word pistuo, which means using faith. Now we want to look at 1 John 5.10 and see what it says. He that believeth on the Son, that would be he who has faith in the Son, has the witness in himself. He that believeth not or who does not have faith uh, has made him a liar because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. We're calling God a liar if we don't put our faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, 1 John 5 and 11, and this is the record that God has given to us, eternal life, and this life is in his son. If we put our faith in Jesus Christ, then we will have everlasting Zoe life, and that is life in a good and proper relationship with God. And Jesus Christ is the only way that we in this time can receive that life from God. John chapter 14, verses 2 and 3. In my Father's house are many mansions. Some translations say are many rooms, but it's a place for us, uh, whether it's a room or a mansion. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. This is what Jesus is promising his followers. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Remember, to be absent from the body is to be present spiritually with the Lord. And then there's going to be a resurrection and a rapture, that all of the believers will be able to live with Jesus Christ forever and ever, in God's heavenly kingdom, and in, excuse me, and in the glory of God. For a supporting scripture, we jump ahead in the gospel according to John to the 17th chapter and the 24th verse. Jesus again is the speaker. Father, I will or wish that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the earth. Jesus existed in spirit before he took on a human body to come down here to the earth to shed his blood that we might receive our salvation. And he wants us to see the glory that he had before he left heaven. And those who put their faith in him will be able to see that glory. And this is what Jesus is saying that he wished could happen and will happen to the believers. John chapter 14, verse 4, and whither I go, ye know, and the way you know. He said, where I'm going, you know, and you know the way to get there. But one of his, or some of his disciples are not going to understand that. John chapter 14, verse 5, Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou, thou goest, and how can we know the way? Now, Jesus has told them uh, back in the fourth verse that he that they know the way that he is going. Now, Thomas is asking, how can we know the way? And Jesus will tell him. John 14, 5 and verse 6. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? In John 14 and 6, Jesus says unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So the way to 
to get to where Jesus is going is to follow him. And the way to follow him for us today and for his apostles was to follow the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ. We go back to John chapter 8, verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, not walk in sin, but shall have the light of life, of Zoe life, life in a good and proper relationship with Jesus. So we see that the way to go to where Jesus is, is to, excuse me, is to follow his teaching and do the things that he has taught us that we should do. In John chapter 14, verse 7, Jesus says, If you had known, if you had known me, ye should have known my Father also, and from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Now again, uh, there's going to be some puzzlement among his disciples. In John 14, 8, Philip asked Jesus, it says, Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffices us. In other words, that'll be sufficient for us if we can see the Father. But they don't really understand at this time who Jesus is. John chapter 14, verse 9, Jesus says unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not knoweth me, Philip? He's answering Philip's question. He that has seen me has seen the Father. How saith thou then, show us the Father? In other words, he's been with them uh, for three years and more, and they have seen him and seen what he has done. And he has told them before that the Father is in him, and he is in the Father, and that he is really the, uh, the physical representation of who God is. John chapter 14, verse 10. Believeth thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the work. In other words, uh, Jesus is saying the same things that God the Father would say to us if the Father made a physical representation of himself to be before us. But God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But he's, Jesus is surprised here that the apostles don't know uh, that he is a physical, Jesus is a physical representation of God the Father. John chapter 14, verse 11, he says, Believe me that I am in the Father, this is Jesus speaking, and the Father in me, or else Believe me for the very work's sake. Now, what Jesus is saying to them is this. You may not believe my words, but you have seen my works. And the works you have seen me do, no one could do unless they were led and guided by the Father. Back in John chapter 10, verse 25, Jesus has said to them, Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. Then he says, the works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. They let us know that he is from God. He, he opened blinded eyes. He opened deaf ears. He uh, cured the lame so they could walk. Uh, he raised the dead. So they should have known that Jesus was really in the Father and doing the works that the Father had sent him to do. And he's saying to them, if you don't believe my words, believe my works. John 14 and 12, after Jesus had told them that uh, they should believe that he did the works of the Father, he says to them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me or hath faith on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. Now what Jesus is saying is these greater works will be greater in number, not in quality. It'll be the not it'll be in quantity, quantity, not quality. Here we have two examples of the apostles and Jesus' disciples doing greater works than he did. In Acts 2 and 41, 
Then they greatly received, gladly received his words, that is the words of Peter, and were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them, unto the church, about 3,000 souls. So they're starting to do work in quantity greater or, than what Jesus had done. But Jesus gave them the ability to do that when he gave them the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 6, verse 7, And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. Here we see they're doing greater works in number than Jesus did, but nobody can do greater works in quality than Jesus. John chapter 14, verses 13 and 14. Still Jesus is the speaker. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. When we do those, ask Jesus for the things that we uh, ask for according to his will. And I will show you that later. We glorify the Father because the Father is glorified in the Son. And we ask in the name of the Son. And Jesus says in the 14th verse, If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now I'm going to show you that that is not an absolute statement because we have further statements from the Apostle John to show you that that is qualified. And we see that that is qualified and limited in 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. It's the same writer and the same inspiration of God, but giving a further explanation of asking in the name of Jesus. And it says, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And going to the 15th verse, and if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. But notice this, because it is very important, that what we must ask for, ask for must be according to the will of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If it's not in his will, he does not hear us with an intent to answer. So be sure that you understand the qualification of John 14 and 15 by going to 1 John 5 and 14 and understanding that we must ask according to the will of God. We go back to John chapter 14, verse 15. Jesus says, If ye love me, keep my commandments. Now this is very important. Uh, if we love Jesus and say that he is truly our Lord, then we should do what he says and keep the commandments that he gives us. Uh, we're going to get the answer to that in a, later ver in a later verse. But right now, I just want to tell you that it is very important that we keep the commandments given to us by our Lord Jesus Christ. John chapter 14, verse 16, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that's the Holy Spirit, that he may abide with you forever. Jesus is promising that he and the Father, or the Father, he says here, will give you another comforter. Uh, verse 17, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Now, the Holy Spirit is with the apostles now at the time that Jesus was speaking. But later in John chapter 20, uh, at verse 22, they will receive the Holy Spirit from Jesus before he departs from the world. We will get to that later in our study. John chapter 14, the 18th verse, Jesus says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Now, remember, he had promised them another comforter. He's going to let it be known that he is going to send a comforter unto them and that he will come to us again at the time of uh, when he comes back from heaven and receives the saints unto himself. John 14, verse 22. Now, Jesus had told his apostles back in the 19th verse, which I, did not, which I did not include in this lesson, yet a little while and the world seeth me no more, but ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. 
and he reinforces that they should keep his commandments if they love him. And now we see Judas says unto him, not Iscariot, this is not Judas Iscariot, Jesus had two apostles named Judas, he said, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? In other words, how is it going to be possible for us to see you and the rest of the world cannot? John chapter 14, verses 23 and 24. Here Jesus expounds upon what he had said in John 14, verse 15. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Now in John 14, 23, Jesus answered him and said unto him, unto Judas, not Iscariot, if a man love me, he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Jesus and the father will come to us. And he that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. And the word which he heard is not mine, but the father which sent me. Jesus is giving honor to the father for giving Jesus, the human Jesus, what to say. So if we love Jesus and keep his commandments, then the Father and the Son will live with us in the person of the Holy Spirit. John chapter 14, verse 25. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. Jesus knows that he is going away and he has told his apostles that he is going away. And what he's saying to them, I'm speaking these things to you before I go. He is giving them what is basically his final briefing before his crucifixion. So he wants, them to, wants to be sure that they know the things that they need to know while he is there with them. Now Jesus has told his apostles that he, is going, he has taught them the things that they should know while he was with them. But then he says in John 14, 26, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said, whatsoever I have said unto you. Now this is a promise of inspiration that we can believe what the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, that is completely, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Now, how can the man of God do that? Because we have the Bible, but the apostles have the Holy Spirit, who Jesus has promised will teach them all things and bring all things to their remembrance, whatsoever he has said to them. So they have a promise that whatever they say and write will be inspired by God. John 14, 27, Jesus has told them that he is going away, that he has given them what they need while he is present with them. And he says, peace I leave with you. And this is in John 14, 27, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Now the world gives peace in different ways. One of the primary ways that the world gives peace is through the possession of material things. People who have material things and have promises of retirement think that they have everything that they need and they have peace of mind in that area. But the peace that God is, that Jesus is going to give his apostles is a peace that uh, the, that's not like the world giveth, but a peace that lets them know the peace of God, which passes all understanding and will keep their hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The peace of God is different than the peace of the world. If we jump ahead to John Chapter 16, verse 33, we will see that these things are about peace are repeated again. These things, Jesus speaking, these things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. He says, I have overcome the world. The trials and tribulations of this world will come upon the saints of God. 
just like they come upon other people, but we can go through them with the peace of God, as I said, that passes all understanding because we know that Jesus has promised he will be with us as long as we keep his words and his teaching. So we will have peace. John chapter 14, verse 28. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would rejoice, because I said I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. Jesus has told the apostles that he is going away, and now they know he is going to the Father, and they should be happy for him. Uh, he says, if you loved me, you would rejoice. They would rejoice. Why? Because he's going back to the Father. And he says, for my Father is greater than I. That is the human Jesus speaking about the spiritual Father. But Jesus and the Father and nature are one. And we thank God for that because he came and shed his blood that we might be saved from our sins. John 14, verse 29 and now, this is Jesus speaking again, and now I have told you before it comes to pass that when it comes to pass, ye might believe or ye might have faith. Uh, Jesus is telling them, I'm telling you ahead of time what's going to happen. So when it happens, you will have faith in me because you will see that what I have said does come to pass. And that we should do the same. What we read in the Bible, in the New Testament, and the teaching of Jesus and his apostles and his prophets, those things will come to pass. John chapter 14, verse 30, Jesus says, Hereafter I will not talk much with you. In other words, he's saying, I won't have much more to say, because or for the prince of this world cometh, that's the devil, and has nothing in me. There's nothing in Jesus, which is all good, that is in the devil, which is all bad. And uh, he's telling his apostles, Jesus is telling his apostles, he's almost finished talking with them. From uh, John chapter 14 through uh, 17, Jesus talks to his apostles and teaches them the things that they need to know. John chapter 14, verse 31, But that the world may know that I love the Father, as the Father gave me commandments, even so I do. This is how Jesus showed the Father that he loved the Father. That is, the human Jesus showed the Father that he loved the Father. And he did whatever the Father told him to do. And as Jesus has said, the way that we can show that we love him is to keep his word. Then he tells his apostles, arise, let us go hence. In other words, this may be the end of the upper room discourse and the remainder of the teaching may have been taught while Jesus was on the way to the, with his apostles to the Garden of Gethsemane. But wherever, whether he finished speaking to them in the upper room or not, what is recorded in chapter 15, 16, and 17 are still the words of Jesus, and we should obey Jesus at all times. I pray for you that God will bless and keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. Coming back again.